Hello, we welcome clinicians. This is Alain Nassan, and I'm joined here today by Dr. Dennis Brave, our Rebuild Endo faculty, and we're going to talk to you about the idea of restorative endodontics. Dennis, thanks for joining me. Uh, thank you, Alan. Dennis, I see you have a uh, piece of paper here, and you have some uh, descriptions for what restorative endodontics is. I can I see did. you've broken it down to four specific topics, uh, and why don't you tell us a little bit about it. We have the area of minimally invasive philosophy, right? Yes. Uh, synchronized materials that help each other uh, basically do the preparation and obturation. Bonded obturation through the use of biceramics, and lastly, techniques full uh, that take full advantage of the material science. Yeah, exactly. So let's go over each one of these specific sure. areas for our viewers, so they could become more familiar with this idea of restorative endodontics, or also called endorestorative, basically. Sure. So, go ahead. Minimally invasive Absolutely. philosophy. What is that all about? Well, it's really it, it's really about taking full advantage of techniques and technology that respect the tooth structure. Mm -hmm. Don't remove unnecessary tooth structure. Remove only the amount of tooth structure that is required to uh, accomplish the task at hand. Our goal is to remove infected dentin. Exactly. That's all we want to do. Right. I don't want to take away material that is part of the strength and the integrity of the tooth simply to accommodate uh, an obturation technique, as an example. Uh, in the past, uh, we had obturation techniques, particularly carrier-based uh, obturation techniques that required, yeah, them. thermoplasticized techniques that required a very large opening at the orifice, a preparation, uh, and they in fact did not respect, do not respect this uh, the value. So when we were removing using thermoplastic obturation, we were removing dentin that was infected, and then we were removing more, right, exactly. only so that we could do the obturation using these pluggers or spreaders and things like that. Exactly. So that was the thing that wasn't so much minimally invasive. Maybe it was minimally invasive because in, before we were having issues with our sealers, which kind of leads to this other issue here with the bonded obturation. I guess that's topic three, but maybe we can jump one and then sure, we'll come back to the synchronized. Sure. So bonded obturation, is that what's allowing us to get away from the use of these pluggers? It, it is. It is actually the uh, the tail that has been w w wagging the dog. <laughs> the dog. And in the past, because our sealers were imperfect in so, and they lacked any real quality in terms of the, uh, the biocompatibility, the ability to bond, the, uh, they were hydrophobic rather than hydrophilic. All of these characteristics prevented us from uh, being able to maintain a thick layer or a thicker layer of the sealer. So we have to minimize the sealer interface. Right. So we use techniques such as vertical condensation, uh, warm uh, processes to Get rid of the sealer. Get rid of the sealer to minimize it. Replace and in it fact, with. replace it with gutta percha. Now we have sealers, such as bioceramic sealers, which in fact are better in the canal than the gutta percha. So it really is being led by obturation. Obturation now being the ability to have in the canal the highest level of technology and the best material science that we can have. So because of the chemistry of these bioceramics being such fine particle size uh, fillers, if you will, right. now we're able to have bonded obturation. And that's a big key here, the fact that previously all these other sealers that weren't bonding, they were just passively sitting there, we were cementing restorations. We were cementing our endodontic gutta percha. Now we're suddenly bonding it in place, that's bonding correct. our fillers in there. And that allows that minimally invasive philosophy through the use of our second point here, the synchronized materials. Exactly. And how's that? I mean, you well, were you you and Dr. Kosh were the guys who basically created this whole idea of synchronized uh, obturation with the endo sequence originally. Exactly. And so, tell us more about that. Well, what we always envisioned was utilizing techniques and particularly the synchronization of technologies, whether it be the file, the paper points, the mm -hmm. gutta percha, even the post sy system. Everything matches the last instrument used to the apex. So in reality, we were developing this minimally invasive concept, but we were always held back by the ability to have the, the sealer that we wanted at the quality that we wanted. Now that we have bioceramic technology, it all has fit together. It closes the gap. It closes, it completes Through the circle. Bonding. Yeah. Yeah, it all has come together now, and so the minimal invasive concept and philosophy can in fact be obtained. 
as a result of our new material science. And the original endo sequence idea uh, uh, was the fact that you synchronize the gutta percha with the endo sequence files, and then later on, uh, real world endo evolved that into the idea of having posts that were pre-matched as well. Correct. So, uh, how does how did the post work out? It was just well, basically the post, we 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 did the math. And we actually uh, created a post that matched the last size instrument. And so we have a small, medium, and large post, each of which will leave five millimeters, approximately five millimeters of gutta percha at the apex at of the, the tooth, which, which is exactly And this want. is all possible because of the constant taper, yes, correct? Yes, it is. Because it, of the constant, you get constant shapes, you can synchronize yes. easily with that. Yes, and, and at the time that this was being developed, and even today, uh, there are numerous file systems that use variable tapers because it reduces the torque on the instruments, mm -hmm. but at the same time it removes excessive amounts of dentin. So we don't necessarily have to do that. We can have better instruments, sharper instruments, better designed, that don't produce a lot of torque in the first place, mm -hmm. as we use, as you know, with our current ESX system, with the uh, endo sequence system we use alternate contact points to diminish the amount of uh, aggressiveness of the instrument in terms of how much dentin it's cutting at any one time. So we were able to go about the process of integrating each of these parts to minimize the amount of tooth structure that's being removed. So Dennis, from what you're telling me here, because of the bonded obturation and the synchronized materials that we have, we're now able to have minimally invasive dentistry done again inside the tooth. And that is really the idea of restorative endodontics, right? On endo restorative. It, it, it is. It is the concept of the fact that the root canal is now part of the restoration of the tooth. It has always been considered a separate portion of the procedure. And the restorative dentist would come behind and mm -hmm. restore the tooth. What we rec have to recognize now is that we actually begin the restoration of the tooth at the apex of the tooth. Yep. And that's a clear change from whatever, from all the thinking that we always had prior to them. Absolutely right. And that is basically your, uh, the fourth point, that is techniques that take full advantage of the material science. Exactly. So right now what we're doing is we're bonding all the way from the apex and then all the way up to the post and then through the core material and then the crown, it becomes total bonded uh, material. And that is really the idea of endorestorative or restorative endodontics, which means restoration and bonding starts from the apex all the way to the crown margins, and that enhances their strength and gives us the best ability to seal. Well, Dennis, this was really informative. Thank you so much for joining me. You're and welcome, for Real World Endo, I'm Ali Nese. I'm Dennis Bray. And we hope you found this information helpful.